In this video, I will show you how to write the equation of a circle and make a graph. And uh, in the later problems, I will show you how to convert the equation of a circle from general form into standard form. By the way, when I talk about the standard form equation of a circle, I'm talking about this second version right here with the parentheses in it. And if I do have this version, I can easily tell the center, because it'll be the opposite of this number and the opposite of this number. I can also tell the radius, because whatever number is at the end will be the radius squared. So the radius, uh, I guess I could technically find it by doing the square root. Anyway, let's look at some actual problems. So here comes problem number five, part A. Okay, uh, maybe I should label this. All right, this is problem number five. So write the equation of a circle that has a diameter with these endpoints. And we might want to use a graph. Okay, so um, I'm just going to plot these two points real quick. So I have the points um, 4, comma, negative 5. Okay, so this is 4, comma, negative 5. It's right here. And then I have 4, comma, 1. So the point 4, comma, 1 is right here. These are supposed to be the endpoints of a diameter. So let's go ahead and draw this diameter. Okay, so this is the diameter of some circle. So that means, uh, I'm just going to do a really rough sketch here. If this is the diameter of a circle, that means there's a circle that goes like this. Okay, and this goes across the middle of it. So here's the most important part. Um, what is the center of the circle if this is the diameter? Well, it, I'm just using my common sense here. It seems to be right here. If I go three up and if I go three down, I'm on the circle. So this is the midpoint. That's going to be the center. So that is the most important thing right there. So that tells me that the center um, is the point 4, comma, negative 2. So 4, comma, negative 2. That's the center. Okay, so now that I know that, uh, I can back this thing up. So the center is 4, comma, negative 2. Now how about the radius? I'm going to need that to write the equation as well. All right, the radius is just half of this diameter. So the radius is 3, as you can see. So the radius is going to be 3. OK. So now um, here comes the equation of the circle. It's going to be x minus, all right, it's the opposite of this. So I'll, I will put minus 4 squared. And then the y part will be the opposite of this. So this will be y plus 2 squared. Now at the end, I should have the radius squared. So 3 squared is 9. So that's it. This is the equation of the circle that has uh, this for the endpoints of the diameter. All right, and that's it for number 5. So number 6. Completing the square is a tool that we need to be able to convert. Uh, later, we're going to have to convert from general form to standard form. And to do that, we will need this, uh, this tool that I'm about to show you right now. Um, let's see, does this have a second part to it? So yeah, I'm going to call this 6a. All right, so this is 6a that I'm doing over, over here. And really, this will be like 6b. And then in a minute, I'm going to do 6c. All right, let's go. Completing the square works like this. This th number on the end needs to be a, a very special number. And I'll, talk, uh, I'll, I'll show you what that is in a moment. But for now, I'm just going to say this is not the right number. So I need to move this to the other side of the equation. And I'm going to do that by adding 1 to both sides. So that's going to give me y squared plus 14y. 
and now I'm going to leave a space right here, and that's going to equal 1. Okay, now, when you complete the square, you're going to create these parentheses squared, like you can see here in this standard form. Um, so I know that what I'm going to have is parentheses squared, all right? It's going to be a binomial squared. So what goes inside the binomial, uh, I see the variable is y. It's going to be y. I see it's plus. It's going to be plus. So then I'm going to have 7. Now, where did the 7 come from? Um, I just did half right here. Half, right? Half of 14 is 7. Now, um, now it's time to complete the square. I'm going to fill in this blank that I left. And the place where that comes from is you take the number in the parentheses and you square it. So I'm going to put a plus 49 right here. Okay, so I, I, I took half and then I squared it. All right, so it's like half and then squared. So that's what just happened. I took half and I got the 7, and I squared it, I got the 49. Um, now, because I added 49 on the left, I must also add 49 on the right. That's kind of the biggest mistake, is forgetting to put 49 on the right as well. So that's going to get, leave me with um, y plus 7 squared is equal to 50. All right, by the way, this trinomial, including the 49, is uh, equivalent to the y plus 7 squared. So this is valid uh, because if you multiplied this out, you know, if you did y plus 7, you know that y plus 7 squared means y plus 7 times y plus 7, right? If I multiplied this out, I would get y squared plus 14y plus 49. So these are equivalent, so it does make sense. Okay, anyway, we were just supposed to complete the square, so this was the answer. Okay, now we need to write this equation in standard form. So the first thing you want to do is take your terms that have x in them and write them next to each other. So these should be written side by side. And next, I'm going to take the terms that have y in them, and I'm going to write them side by side. At the same time, the minus 74, this is just in the way. I'm going to move that to the other side by adding 74 to both sides. OK, so in that case, here's what I have. I've got x squared plus 2x, all right, that's my x terms together. Leave a little bit of space here to complete the square. And then here come the y terms. So I'm going to have y squared minus 10y, all right, put those together. Again, leave some space, and then that is going to equal 74. So I'm going to complete the square twice. So on this side, I'm going to have x plus 1 squared. All right, that comes from taking half of this. I'll have a plus in between. Now, from right here, I'm going to have y minus 5 squared. The minus is because of the 10 that is negative. And again, I'm taking half. Half of negative 10 is negative 5. Okay, so I get that. Now, we need to complete the square, though. Okay, I need to um, write the constant that will go at the end of this trinomial. All right, I'm looking at this. Th I'm going to turn this into a trinomial. And um, to get that, I take the number in the parentheses and I square it. But 1 squared is still 1. Now I need to add that on the right-hand side of the equation as well. And then, uh, again, to get the number that completes the square right here, as I make this trinomial, Uh, I need to square this. So this is going to be 25. This is always positive. So even though this is negative, 
is still going to be positive 25 because negative 5 squared means negative 5 times negative 5 and a negative times a negative is a positive. Anyway, because I added 25 on the left, I need to add 25 on the right. Hmm, my 1 disappeared, so I need to do plus 1 and also plus 25. Okay, so uh, if I add all these together, that's going to be 100. So this is now standard form. All right, now this says convert to standard form. Um, by the way, before I go over to that, this is the equation of a circle. Okay. Um, the center, they didn't ask me for this, but if they had, it would be the opposite of this, comma, the opposite of this. So it would be, the center would be negative 1, comma, 5. And the radius would be the square root of this. So the radius would be 10. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at 6 part C. We need to convert this equation to standard form. So again, the first thing we need to do is put together, actually there's something else we need to do. Uh, on the previous problem, the leading coefficient was 1. You know, see how there's no number in front of the x squared or the y squared? That means the leading coefficient is 1. But in this problem, the leading coefficient is 5. And I see another 5. In fact, all of these are divisible by 5. So before I do anything else, what I need to do is divide everything by 5. Okay, so that's what you do as your first step. Divide by 5 everywhere. So that's going to give me a new equation now that goes x squared plus y squared plus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. Now we'll do what I started to say. I've got an x term here and I've got another term with x's in it here. Those go together. So when I rewrite, I'll put those side by side. Now I see y squared. I don't see any other term that has a y in it. So it's just going to be y squared this time. Um, I am going to still do this. This 5, I'm going to move that to the other side by doing minus 5 on both sides. So if I make all those changes, first putting the x's next to each other, so I'm going to have x squared plus 6x, leave a space. And then I'll have plus y squared, all right? Because it's just y squared, I don't need to complete the square, so I don't need to leave any space. And then I'll have equals negative 5. Now I'm going to turn this into a trinomial, uh, and then I will turn that into a binomial squared. Actually, I like to start with the binomial. The binomial will be x plus 3, because half of 6 is 3. Now, the number that completes the square is uh, I'm going to take this 3, and I'm going to square it, 3 squared, almost like what you can see right here, 3 squared. So and that's going to be 9. And then I immediately need to jump over to the right-hand side and add 9 over there. Okay, so now this is equal to x plus 3 squared. I can bring down the y squared. Okay, and this is going to equal 4. So that's it. This equation is now written in standard form. Now that's all they asked me to do. Um, however, if they had asked me for the center, I would have told you negative 3 comma zero. It's the opposite of this. And then see how this has no numbers with it? That means it's a zero. And then the radius, well the radius is two. All right, this number is the radius squared. So the square root will give you the radius. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.